Hey everyone, Vegetarian Zombie here. In this video, we're going to start really diving into the interactive aspects of Twine. And we do this by the way of coding. Now, some of you are probably breaking out into a cold sweat. Don't worry, we're going to be taking this journey one step at a time. Now, just a reminder, I have a Discord all set up with a very supportive community. If you have any questions about Twine or coding or just video games in general, feel free to swing on by. If you have any Twine specific questions, stop by the Twine channel and feel free to ask them. Okay, on to the business at hand. Coding is scary because when you oftentimes see code, it's just a jumble of strange words arranged in a bizarre order that makes no sense. Truth be told, whenever I see pictures of code, it's usually especially complex code samples because they tend to look impressive. Code ideally should be short, concise, and above all, clear to the reader. I'll discuss best practices later on, so ignore any of those crazy samples. Code, in essence, is just concise instructions. It's meant to be clear without any ambiguity. This is why spoken language isn't a good candidate. For example, take the following sentence. When the rocket exploded, the flight director saw red. That's an ambiguous statement. Did the flight director see a red color? Was the flight director angry? What does red mean in that context? I mean, this is part of the joys of written language. These ambiguities can oftentimes provide deeper meanings about a subject. Well, computers don't like ambiguity. They hate it. Instead, we write in a shorthand language that is meant to be clear. These languages tend to be very simple in nature. They contain maybe a dozen special words that you must learn as well as some syntax. Yes, this can be challenging if you've never written in a programming language. But trust me, learning a spoken language like English or Spanish or Japanese is far more challenging. You can think of a computer language like a paper airplane, whereas a spoken language is like the space shuttle. Now, I'm not trying to minimize the expressiveness of computer languages. You could do some crazy things with them. Languages are quite fluid, and when you see a master developer, they make the code appear like magic. But don't worry, we'll be casting some cool spells. We just have to start off at the beginning. Now, we're using the Harlow story format. This is the default story format. This story format provides the Harlow language. It's a language designed for beginner coders. The syntax is easy to learn, but it provides a lot of tools to create rich and interactive experiences, meaning the pool starts shallow, but it goes very deep. Harlow uses what is known as macros. Macros define what we can do with the language. We can't create our own macros, so these macros define the limits of what we can do. But don't worry, we can do a lot because there are a ton of macros. The very first macro we'll be using is called the set macro. The set macro allows us to store data. This data can be anything. The player's name, the number of hit points, how many turns have elapsed, really any data you want. We do this by storing data in a variable. You can think of a variable as a safe deposit box. You put that data inside of it. When you need that data, you refer to the safe deposit box. Let's take the following. Apples equals one, bananas equals two. What is apples plus bananas? The answer is three. You created a variable called apples and then you assigned it the value of one. You then created a variable called bananas and assigned it a variable of two. When you add them together, you replace the variable names with their values. In Harlow, our variables always start with a dollar sign. This lets Twine know it is working with a variable. To assign a value to a variable, we use the set macro. This is how it looks. First, you start with an open parenthesis, and then you type the word set with a colon after it. All macros start like this. After the colon, you put the variable name. After that, we put the word to. Then we put the value followed by a close parenthesis. This reads set 
apples to one. We are assigning a value to the apples variable. Notice when you read it out loud, it flows like a sentence, whereas when you write it, it's short and concise. Now, you can reference your variables in text by just writing it. Simply write the variable name in your text and the variable will be replaced with the value that it represents. We can also print out the variable using the print macro. You simply write open parentheses followed by print and a colon and then write a variable name followed by a closing parentheses and that prints out the value. Okay, enough theory, let's see this all in action. Okay, we're starting off with our story from where we last left off. Create a new passage and call it introduction. So I'll just move this over here and give it the name. Okay, we're gonna be using this passage to introduce users to our game. So add the following text. Now I've just pasted the I've just pasted the text here. If you want to follow it exactly, then just pause the video and enter it as is. Now you can see here we've defined two new passages, an easy passage and a hard passage. So we'll close this and here they are. So we're going to move these over here. And what I want to do is create a variable to set the difficulty. If the user taps the easy option, we'll set the difficulty to easy. So open up the easy passage here. And now we're not gonna add any text, but we're going to add our first macro. So open parentheses and then type set and then a colon. And you can see it goes italic. And this is because Twine understands that this is a macro that we're working with. Now I'm going to type in dollar sign difficulty. You'll also notice that the color has changed. Oftentimes working in coding environments, your code is color coded. And in that way, it makes it easier to tell what things do what. So in this case, you know that blue text here with the dollar sign is a variable. Now we type the word two and then open quotes, easy, close quotes, and then another parentheses. So you can see that the set is now purple along with the two the difficulty is blue and easy is text. Okay, so we set this to easy. I'm gonna copy this here. I'm gonna close this. And let's go to hard and let's paste this here. Now let's replace easy with hard. Okay, so now what we wanna do is redirect the user to the camp entrance. We set the difficulty variable and then send them on their way. Now we could put some text there that reads, please click here to start the game, but that's a needless step. Let's just send the user. To do this, we use another macro. So underneath the set, put open parentheses. And now what I want you to do is to type go hyphen two, followed by a colon. Now we need to provide where we want the user to go to. In this case, we want them to go to the camp entrance. Then close quote, and then close parentheses. Now remember, spelling is very important. If you misspell this, Twine will have no idea where to send the user. So copy this. Let's close this here. And we'll open this and we'll add the same go to statement. And you'll notice that we're doing this in code but there's no arrows indicating a transition. Okay, now let's run the story. Here's our story. Okay, we're starting off in the camp entrance. Let's close this and instead select the introduction here and we're going to make this the start. Here we go. Now play your story. There it is. Welcome to the Wrath of Bernie. Here's our text. Let's select easy mode. Okay. It sets the variable and sends us to the beginning. Now let's print out the variable. Remember, there are two ways we can do this. The first way is we can just simply put, you have selected, and now we'll put the name, difficulty, 
and difficulty. Or you have selected, let's change this to mode so it's not as confusing. So it will say you have selected difficulty mode. Essentially, if it's easy, it will be replaced with you have selected easy mode or you have selected hard mode. So let's close this, run our game, select easy. You have selected easy mode. Excellent. Now, the other way we can do this is by using the print macro. So we can select this and delete it. Start with an open parentheses, type print, the colon, and then difficulty. Whoops. Now close this, run your game, and we'll, we'll select hard this time. And you can see it does the same exact thing. What happens if you declare the difficulty in the easy passage, but you forget to set it in the hard passage? Well, let's try this out. Let's go to the hard passage here and delete the difficulty. Now run your story choose that was hard wasn't it <laughs> and it says right here you have selected zero mode we don't get anything you see twine can't find the difficulty variable you've defined it in one passage but we didn't select that passage so twine doesn't know about it thus twine provides a default value which is zero we've just introduced what is known as a bug in our code it won't work as expected and may cause issues down the road. So let's return back to our hard mode. Actually, I'm just going to copy this here and paste this. One of the difficulties when working with the web editor is that you don't get undo. And that could be problematic when you're working with a complex story. Later in this course, I'll show you how you can get undo functionality, but that of course means leaving the browser. Okay, one question I get a lot is, how can a story prompt the user for their name? To do this, open up the introduction passage and let's add a prompt. So right at the, right at the top here, put open parentheses, type prompt, then colon. Now, what you need to do is put in the question that you're prompting. In this case, we're asking for their name. So we'll type, what is your name? You could also ask, what is your favorite holiday? Uh, what day of the year is it? Whatever you want, you can ask. Now we need to provide a default value because what happens if the user decides not to answer? Well, if you don't care, you can just put nothing, which is what these open quotes, close quotes do. In this case, let's just set this to player one. Okay, so this is our prompt. Now let's close this and run our story. And you'll see right away it prompts. And we have the default value here. What is your name? What is your name? I'll put vegetarian zombie. Click OK. And You'll notice once I clicked OK, my name appeared at the top of the passage. This happens because we aren't storing the result of the prompt. So Twine just prints it out. What if we want to put this into our safe deposit box that is in a variable? How do we do this? Well, we can assign the result of one macro to another macro. So let's see this in action. We'll close this here. We'll open up our introduction. Now, what we want to do is create a set macro. So we'll type set. And now we need a variable. So this is going to be player name. Then we write two. Now, how do we get the result of the prompt? Well, we can just take this and I copy, I cut that and now I'm pasting it afterwards. And then I put a close parentheses. Remember, whenever you have an open parentheses, you always must have a close parentheses. Same with a quote. Whenever you have an open quote, you always need an end quote. Otherwise, your code will break. So what is exactly happening here? Well, when this is actually run, 
Twine sees the set and it creates the player name variable. Now it needs to assign a value to it and then it reaches the prompt. And Twine recognizes that this is a macro. So what it does is it actually runs the macro. And this macro returns a value, which is the name. So Twine then stores that name in the player name variable. Now, if you use a macro that doesn't return a value, you're introducing another bug into your code. I'm not too sure what will happen. I think I'm guessing that it will be set to a zero or something like that, but feel free to play around in your own code. Okay, let's see how this works. Let's close this and let's open up the introduction here and we'll just print a hello. Hello, player name. Now we'll close this, run your story. What is your name? Putting vegetarian zombie, click OK. Now we'll go into easy mode. You'll notice that the you'll notice that my name now disappears. It's now being stored within the variable. And you can select one of the modes here and it says, hello, vegetarian zombie. And I'm gonna stop this here and let's rerun this one more time. In this case, what's your name? Cancel, play easy mode, hello player one. Hopefully that introduction to coding wasn't too difficult. We'll be working with a lot of macros and I'll be doing my best to explain things in a clear manner. Do understand that learning coding will take both time and frustration. It's just part of the process. It's really easy to think you are quote dumb unquote for not getting it. That's incorrect. You are learning a new skill, testing muscles that you've never used. So no, you aren't dumb at all. It just takes patience and practice and well, failure too. As it said, success comes from good experience. And of course, good experience comes from bad experience. Now, if you have any questions, feel free to stop by the Discord. I have the Twine channel all set up, so feel free to come along and say hello. And also, feel free to share your work as well. So if you have any stories in progress or completed stories, just paste it there, and I'd love to check it out. Now, if you're new to this channel, definitely hit that subscribe button and ding the notification bell to be informed about new Twine videos. Thanks again for watching, everyone. I'll catch you in the next one.